Hey, good morning, everyone. I uh, hope everyone is having a blessed Thursday. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started here with today's devotion, and we're continue on dealing with the subject of anxiety. Um, as everyone else has, has talked about um, so far, uh, it is something that, you know, um, affects everyone. Everyone is, is affects with or is affected by anxiety and you know I think that circumstances obviously um, enhance that and and I know some people deal with it a lot worse uh, or have have it worse than other people um, but it is something that affects us all um, and in time you know I know Jody talked about um, the subject and stuff and, and my wife used to ask me do I not worry about anything um, and and I used to could say well not really but you know that changes that changes at times uh, and when we do become fearful about things and we do have worry about things and um, you know and that's kind of the purpose of this devotion and uh, definitely a good topic there that the pastor has um, picked out for this week to do our devotions on um, and get everybody's kind of take on anxiety, but it's not so much our take. Um, it's not being doctors, but but it's what God's word says about it, and that's that's what we want to look at today. Uh, I do have one slide here that I that I found and I thought was pretty neat. Um, again, um, not a doctor, you know, but the definition anxiety is your body's natural response to stress, and, and we've said that before. Um, there's part of, there's the problem of, of anxiety when I try to take care of my problems. Um, you know, me, self, um, I can't fix me and self and I's problems. I can solve some of my problems, um, but, you know, uh, and we've talked about, I know, TJ has mentioned several times about the self-help books, and some of those are good and offer some good suggestions and things, but, you know, um, self can only help. We're limited. We're limited in what we can do, okay? But a fear, um, a feeling of fear, apprehension about what is to come, the unknown, and, you know, things like the first day of school, job interview, uh, giving speech, a lot of people, you know, um, don't like to be in front of people and in front of crowds. And, you know, those are natural anxiety things. Um, but when we look at this over here, uh, and again, this is from a more of a science perspective, a normal reaction to stress or a difficult time triggered by uh, specific stressors. Um, you know, anxiety has a start and ending point. Um, can be motivational, I guess. You know, people get anxious about things and your heart starts pounding and, you know, uh, I guess increases intensity. And, uh, you know, I guess a lot of times in football, you see people that, you know, they can channel that anxiety and that fear into their energy and, you know, um, sometimes allows them to be maybe a little bit better of a football player. But we're talking about life here. Um, you know, but as you look at all these stuff here, it's situations and comes out of nowhere and, you know, um, it's ongoing. It comes, it goes and physical symptoms of sweating, trembling, lightheadedness, racing heart, you know, uh, feels impossible to control or manage at times. And all of these are true indicators of what anxiety uh, does. But what I want to look at this today um and this devotion here is, is the, the source of anxiety, okay? Uh, and, and I think it was Brother Jody that shared the scripture, maybe him and uh, TJ talked about, you know, being anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer, supplication. Um, the devil knows every one of these, okay? Um, he, he knows every uh, trigger. He knows what's going to, you know, trigger your anxiety. He knows what would trigger my anxiety. Um, he knows that stress and stressful times, um, it is natural to feel some anxiety, you know, 
if you were floating down a river peacefully, no, you know, just at a good pace, enjoying a sun filled day, uh, enjoying the sunshine, you're not going to be really stressful. But as soon as you start hitting some rapids and things feel like they're becoming out of your control, uh, you're going to get a little anxious. And the devil knows that. And so his job, what he wants to do, is to put us in those stressful situations, to put us in um, anxious um, moments every way he can. Okay. Um, and, and so as a result of that, we have to look at the common source of anxiety. Um, and, and that's the devil. That is the devil. You know, um, that is a, um, you know, this one down here at the bottom about talks about feels impossible to control or manage. You know, um, we can become enslaved, not just to anxiety, but we can be enslaved to, to a lot of emotions, a lot of feelings. Um, and, and the devil wants to do anything he can do to disrupt our day or cause us to doubt um, or to put us in some type of a, in, imprisonment. Okay. And then a lot of times we, you know, you can get in these situations where we feel like we're in prison and, and there's no key. All right. Um, and, and so, again, when we look at all these things here and, and as I said, anxiety is something that that everyone deals with at certain levels. OK. And the devil knows that. But <clears throat> what we want to do is look at what does God's word say? All right. And, and scriptures that we have for today was Zephaniah. 3 and 17 says, The Lord thy God is in the midst of thee, is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will, he will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. And, you know, when we look at the anxiety, um, in situations and every one of those things that I showed you there at the very beginning on that chart dealt with, you know, stressful situations or circumstances and things like that. As Christians, what we have to remember, and, and again, um, I know what anxiety is. Um, I have felt anxious, uh, you know, and I, I've told you in some of the other devotions and, and things about when the pandemic first hit. You know, and I was having some aches and pains beforehand, uh, kind of on the left side and arm going numb. and Everything was heart related, uh, at least is what everyone was telling me. And then you throw in a pandemic and, you know, I, I became anxious. I was having pains and, you know, um, it was affecting my mind. It, it was doing a lot of things to me. Um, and, you know, and I did go to the doctor and they did do stress tests and they did EKGs and they did all these different tests and stuff. And, you know, I uh, came back of everything could have a pulled muscle. I uh, got some nerve issues in my elbow that was causing my hands to go numb. You know, and there was some medical things there, but nothing like um, with a what I was thinking, at least. And, you know, do I still feel anxious at times? Yeah, um, I do. Not because of medical conditions anymore. You just kind of, I think everyone is tired of uh, pandemics and, and, you know, the things that are going on in the world today. Uh, it's, you know, we've said it before, uh, watch the news. You can have some anxiety, you know, what's going on. And the key to it is this, uh, here's how I have learned to control my days. Um, Here's how I can help myself. And we're talking about self-help. And that is remember who my father is. Okay. And that's what Zeph and I is talking about right here. As I said, anxiety is going to come to all of us in some form or fashion. What triggers one may not trigger another. You've got your things um, that's going to cause you to be anxious over whatever. You know, but the, but the Bible is telling us, you know, things are going to happen. Circumstances, situations beyond our control are going to take place in our lives. And, and, you know, being anxious over those things means that we got to put everything in its order. And when we remember who our father is, okay, that's the reason why he tells us to be anxious over nothing. Who, who is our father? All right. And just out of this one verse here in Zephaniah, he tells us that he has an incredible love for us. 
Okay. And to make this personal, he has an incredible love for you. Um, he is with you. If you have given your heart and life to Jesus, uh, he, he's with you right now, wherever you're at in the midst of a storm. You know, if you're down in the valleys, if you're up on the mountaintops, Christ is there with you. He delights in us, you know, um, and, and I think about it from from being a, an earthly father. You know, I, I love my boys. Um, it's it's an incredible love. You know, um, I feel their pains. I rejoice when they're happy. Um, but I think about the level that our heavenly father, the more perfect of love, um, you know, as a father, I'm I've got my faults. I do. Um, and, and as much as I love my boys, you know, it's it's not a perfect love. But the love that our father has for us is perfect. He rejoices over us. You you know, as parents, we've rejoiced over our children, you know, uh, to see them hit the basket or, you know, uh, score the winning touchdown or stand for the Lord and do things like that. Man, it just it, it can melt your heart. Um you know, and you just rejoice in, in, in the accomplishments that, that a child might have. And I think about that with our Heavenly Father. He comforts us. You know, when when I was going through my ordeal and, you know, even if it would have came back to where I was having some major medical issues, uh, I'm thankful that I did. not But even in those, God gives us comforts. Um, he gives us comfort. And, and he comforts us each and every day. Uh, and that's the reason why he says, cast all our cares on him. Why? Because he cares for us. You know, uh, he calms us with his love. I love that, um, that he calms us with his love. And, you know, Pastor mentioned that Sunday in his message, um, you know, of, of calming. And, you know, and we was aggravating him a little bit after church was over with about relaxing and, and everything else and resting in, in Christ. You know, and yeah, we need to take our breaks and we need to rest and stuff. But the the calm and the rest that that he was talking about and that we can find is when we submerse ourselves in God's love. Uh, when we surround ourselves, you know, I can put in a you know some headphones and and be listening to some some good music um, and and just be calmed by you know the praises of the Lord by or you know songs that affirm his love that he has for us, you know, um, reading his word, you know, when we get down on our knees talking to him in prayer. Uh, there's such a calm there that you can't find anywhere else. He calms us with his love. He is our protector. Um, you know, nothing can touch us that doesn't pass through his hand. And, and knowing that he is our protector, um, you know, and think about a child in the middle of the night. Our devotion mentioned that on our app. And, you know, a thunderstorm or whatever else. Uh, I can remember growing up and, you know, our house was broken into. I think I was in fourth grade when it happened during Christmas. And, I mean, they wiped us out, everything. And it was probably for a month, maybe a year after that, that I slept in the floor of my mom and dad's room. And, you know, um, not always to their knowing, after a couple of weeks, you know, you got to get back to bed. They assured me that they were, you know, we was going to be protected and nobody was going to, you know, we wasn't home when they broke into the house. But I just knew in my mind that they were coming back, not that they had anything left to take unless they took one of us. But, um, you know, and, and a lot of times then I would sit in my bed and be fearful. And then I would wait for my mom and dad to go to sleep. And once they went to sleep, then I was going and I was taking my pillow and a sleeping bag and I was putting it right there in the, the floor, right beside of their bed. And many mornings, they didn't know I was there, and I'd get stepped on in the morning when they'd get out of the bed in the mornings. But, uh, you know, our Heavenly Father is our protector, and, and that's what we want. When we're close to Him, we feel safe. Um, and then and He joys over us with singing. I love that part as well. You know, it's, it's hard to be singing songs of praise and be in a bad mood. Um, and, and I love to sing. I, my wife recorded me the other night. I was in there in the office and just singing away and uh, she sent it to Dalton and asked if she missed my if he misses my singing uh because I'd get oftentimes yelled at and they would be like dad be quiet quit singing my goodness we're trying to watch tv um but I think about 
Christ singing over us, um, you know, um, with joy. That, that, that is an awesome thought. And then in Psalms 139, uh, verses 13 through 18, it says, Thou hast possessed my reins. And we talked about that in, in a sermon there about the reins. You know, that's what guides the horse. And, and you know, um, I love to ride horses. And, you know, um, I won't say I'm a great rider, but I would think that I'm a pretty decent rider um, as far as with horses. And I've ridden a lot of horses in my life. And, you know, but I've also know people who are really good at it. And, and they can, you know, when those reins are in their hands, that horse is going to be able to do a lot more than, you know, with just your average rider. Um, and but thou hast possessed my reins. In other words, you know, when we submit to God and, and allow him the reins in our lives, he's in control. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. It says, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. And that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee. When I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, thine eyes did Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which were which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts, are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Um, I, I love those verses. And, and just to kind of sum that up and end our devotion this morning, from the womb to the tomb and beyond, uh, as a child of God, you know, before we came into this world, uh, when we were conceived and in the womb of our mother, Christ knew us by name. You know, um, he is with us from the time that we're born until we are put in the grave. And the good news is, and even beyond that, you know, um, death can't separate us from the Lord. Um, you know, that as a child of God, when our heart and life is his, when we when we put our faith and trust in the blood that was shed on Calvary, um, we have a promise uh, that, that he's going to go with us always, even to the end. And then the grave's not the end for none of us. You know, after that is judgment. And so our prayer this morning is if you're you're watching this and you don't have this assurance that we're talking about, that anxiety is winning the battle and, and you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, um, it you know, that can change. That you're one prayer away from having that one in which you can rest in, that you can find that rest in. And, you know, anxiety still will show up, uh, but but we have a solution for it. And that's when we can submerse ourselves in God's word. Uh, we can surround ourselves with his love. You know, we call out to him as our father. He promises that he'll be there with us. Um, so none of us are excluded. If we've got breath in our lungs, Christ can be with us. He wants to be with us. Uh, he desires to be with us. He wants to sing over you. He wants to rejoice in you. Uh, and, and the good news is it's not because of anything that you've done. We don't deserve that, but that's the love of the Father that he desires to be with us. Uh, he wants to take our cares, our troubles, our trials, um, and he wants to handle those for us. Why? Because he's a good father. So this morning, I pray that if you are having a, an, an anxious day, take that break. Um, you know, if you can't remove yourself from the stressful situation or, you know, if it's work related or whatever it might be, find just a minute to where you can bow your head and, and, and pray out to, to, to our Lord and our Savior, to a God that, that hears. And, and he, will, he will calm those fears. He will um, help us in whatever situation that we're in. And uh, we, can, we can take that to the bank. Because he, because his word's true, and you know the two scriptures, the, the Bible is full of the promises that God has made to us. And today we just heard a couple of them, but there's enough there to ease whatever um, 
anxiety or anxious moment you might be going through. So we love you. Pray that you have a very blessed day. You know, it's raining outside right now, but even in the rain, we know that the sun shines. Sometimes we allow the cloud to block the view, but our son, our father, he is always shining. Um, so don't don't focus on the clouds. Think about the sun that's that's always shining, and that's our heavenly father. We love you. Pray that you have a great day, and we look forward to seeing you real soon.